Hey there, Westerosi. Welcome back to Mike Meeple's Painting Poorly Miniature Painting Tutorials. Today, we're continuing our series of beginner painting tutorials for Come On Games, A Song of Ice and Fire, the Miniatures Game, by going all the way back to the beginning. We're going to learn how to paint the original heavy hitter unit for the Lannister faction, the House Clegane Mountain's Men. These poor excuses for knights come in four different sculpts, and though their house colors are bright yellow and black, I'm going to be basing their look on their in-game art. As you can see, the unit itself isn't actually wearing any bright yellow, but some muted tones do suggest the House Clegane colors, so I'll be using some different colors to imitate that same muted look today. I'm also utilizing the Army Painter's Plate Mail Metal Color Primer to save some time, as using this will take care of all the armor at once, and we just have to fill in the details. If you don't have this particular primer, you can of course just prime white and paint the armor separately before we start. Let's get to it. Don't forget to thin all your paints with equal parts water, unless I tell you otherwise and we're going to start off by using Chocolate Brown by Vallejo to paint their tunics. On certain models, you'll also paint the sleeves this color. And on this particular model, it also means painting his turtleneck. Don't be afraid to use multiple coats so you don't see any of the silver or plate mail metal showing through. Next, we'll be taking some Japanese uniform by Vallejo and painting all of the padded armor. The padded armor has a diamond pattern and on two of the four sculpts is located on the thighs, but on this model, the padded armor is actually on the sleeves. And on this model, there isn't any padded armor, so be on the lookout for that. This color is a deep mustard, which will serve as the base muted yellow we're going for. Next, we're going to use some basic skin tone by Vallejo to paint the faces. After that, we're going to spend some time on the flag. Bright yellow is a difficult color to paint, so to help us out, we're going to start off by painting the flag white. I used Vallejo white, but you can use whatever white you like. It doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be even, it doesn't even have to be a strong coat, it just needs to be on there. When that's dry, we'll take some demonic yellow by the army painter and paint the flag. The white undercoat gives the yellow all the support it needs to be a bright, vibrant color, though you still may want to add two coats. Once that's dry, we'll be using Vallejo's German Grey to paint the Hound insignias on the flag. Don't use too much pressure, just a light brush against the raised detail of the hounds should be enough to catch the paint. Once 
While we have our German gray out, we'll be using this to paint all the leather of each model, the satchels, the belts and straps, and the non-metallic portions of the scabbards. I also painted the handles of the swords this color, and I decided to use this color to give the Mountain's Men some gloves. You obviously don't have to do this, but I felt it added an extra layer of detail and helped break up all the metal. After you've done that, take some of your chocolate brown and paint the flagpole. Next, we'll be using gunmetal gray straight out of the bottle to paint the metallic portions of the flag, like the cap at the bottom and the fist ornament at the top, along with the hilts and pommels of the swords. After that is a good time to paint the hair and beards whatever color you like. I'm using colors I've already used or will be using elsewhere in the paint job to make it easy on myself. The final thing we'll be doing is taking some plate mail metal by the army painter and touching up any armor or metallic portions, including the studs in the flag, belt buckles, or anything else you accidentally got paint on. Once that's dry, it's time for shades! We'll start with light tone by the army painter and use that to shade the flag. Next, we'll be using Flesh Wash by the Army Painter and applying that to the faces. Don't worry about getting it on the beards, we'll just be painting over all of that later. Finally, we'll use Nuln Oil by Citadel and apply that to the rest of the model. I like to go section by section on each model in order to make sure that I wash the entire mini and don't miss any areas. When that's all dry, it's time for highlights and finishing touches. We're going to start by highlighting the faces using basic skin tone. Apply a highlight down the middle of the nose, on the cheekbones, and where applicable, the forehead. After that, we'll be highlighting the flag with our demonic yellow. Apply a highlight wherever the flag billows outward, along with a slight edge highlight along the top, bottom, and the ragged edge. You can also paint a thin line down the portion of the flag that is wrapped around the pole.
after that, we're going to add a secondary highlight by mixing together one part demonic yellow and one part white. Paint a smaller center portion of your previous highlights on the billowing portions of the flag, along with adding a small touch of highlight to the few corners around the edges. Nothing too big, just a little bit to push some of the contrast. Next, we'll be mixing together equal parts of Japanese Uniform and Dark Sand by Vallejo, and using that color to highlight the padded armor. This part might take you some time. You'll want to paint the center of each diamond in the padding, leaving a little bit of the original mustard color showing around the edges. Mostly, all you'll need to do is a little dot in the center, but use your judgment. Next, mix together some Chocolate Brown and Flat Earth by Vallejo and use it to highlight the flagpole and the tunics. On the sleeves, paint about 75% of what's exposed to the light, usually what's in the front and the top of the model. For the tunic itself, just paint where the fabric billows outward. When you're done with that, take some flat earth and add a second level of highlight. Just like we've done before, paint the center portions of your previously painted highlights.
After that, we'll mix together one part German Grey and one part Neutral Grey by Vallejo to add highlights to the satchels and scabbards. When that's dry, use neutral gray to add a second highlight to the satchels and an edge highlight to all the leather belts and straps, including each finger of the gloves if you chose to do gloves. And if you've got a really steady hand, you can also add an edge highlight running along the top of each hound on the flag. But if your hands aren't that steady, this is a step you can skip. Now you can apply a highlight to the hair and beards using whichever colors you base coated them with, paint their eyebrows with that same color, paint the rim of the base, and get out some Vallejo dark earth paste to add some texture to the base. Vallejo dark earth paste can take a few hours to dry completely, so I always like to leave it overnight. You can add some depth to the terrain itself by dry brushing on a little flat earth. And then dry brushing on some dark sand. Now, time to touch up the rim and hit it with some matte spray. To add some foliage to the base, you'll need some PVA glue. I use Aline's Tacky Glue, which you can get from any craft store and some static grass. I'm using field grass by the Army Painter. Mix up your glue with some water until it's a consistency of a nasty loogie. Use a brush to apply some glue to the base in as random a pattern as you can, and then sprinkle some static grass onto the entire base of the figure. Wait a moment, and then turn the figure to the side, give it a strong tap or two from the bottom, and shake all the excess static grass off. I'm also going to be using some grass tufts from the Army Painter's Battlefield XP line. Just dab on a little bit of our glue mix, and then use some tweezers to grab a tuft and apply it to the base, keeping pressure on it for a few seconds to allow the glue to begin to cure. And that's it! Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful! I want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons whose generous support helped me make quality content like this. If you're interested in becoming a patron yourself, information on how to do so can be found in the description for this video, along with links to all the supplies I used today, and a link to my blog, where you'll find more tutorials for games like A Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures Game. And if you like this video and would like to see more, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, Westerosi.